I rented a beach house three hours south of Dallas for my birthday, just far enough away to feel like a retreat, but near enough to invite those closest to me. It definitely was a splurge, but there's much to celebrate currently in my life, so it was a no-brainer decision. What are we chefing up? Huevos. Huevos rancheros. This is what peak male fitness looks like. Peak poker player male fitness. The body of a 17-year-old boy. What it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we get the sponsorship. Sponsor us, baby. Sponsor us. Let's go. 500K. Having lived in Los Angeles for 10 years, one of my top things is being near the water. So every night for sunset, we found ourselves on this remote sand dune beach. Oliver was showing off left and right, and Lucas even brought his pup, Ella. Like a meetup game though, the drinks didn't stop flowing, and even though I'm another year older and supposedly wiser, one thing definitely hasn't changed. I still can't handle my liquor. Welcome everybody to the Lodge live stream. We have an absolutely stacked lineup for you guys today. It is Thursday afternoon. Thank you all for joining us. You got Greg Potter in the booth. We are playing some 5, 10, 10 today. 2K cap to start, but it is match the stack after the fact. Wolfgang Poker is joining us in C4 today. All right, you guys, we are into the real stakes poker 5 10 10 game for $2,000. It is matched the stack, so money is going to be topped up at a high frequency. But for now, we're playing a 2K stack, and I look down at Ace 4 offsuit from the straddle. I should say double straddle, the 25 and 50 are on. I'm in the 50 position at this point. Ifan raises it up to $125 from the hijack. And I have a pretty clear call here with Ace-4 offsuit. I put in the call and we are off to the flop, which gives me a gutter and an overcard on a 9-5 deuce with two clubs board. I could decide to lead out on this board. It's not exactly the best board for Ifan. For instance, if he had a hand like Queen Jack, Ace King, King Queen, stuff like that, they'd probably just fold right away. But I decide to check in the actions over to him with King Kong. He has a strong hand, probably gonna be wanting to bet it. That's what he decides to do to the tune of 100 bucks. I have a pretty easy decision here. I have the gutter and the over card, so I decide to put in the call, thinking of one card and one card only, and of course it comes, the three of hearts, bang, we turn the wheel. For all you newbies out there, the wheel is another way to call the bottom end of the straight, ace, two, three, four, five. So yeah, we got ourselves the wheel, which uh, pretty much is the nuts on this board. Don't really think Ifan is gonna have four, six suited in this spot. So I'm gonna go for a check raise. I check it over to him. The second plan of the check raise is Ifan has to, of course, bet, which uh, he gets the memo and puts out a nice healthy bet here of $350. And what a turn <laughs> card for Wolfgang. Nothing like six or seven. Easy no, no, game. No. Now, the only thing I'm thinking about here is how large to go. I probably want to go somewhere around 1,000 to 1,400. And uh, let's see what I decide to do. Looks like me in the past decided to do exactly just that, and I raise it up to $1,250. It's a healthy raise here, and it signifies to Ifan that I'm ready to play for stacks. He gets the memo and ships his entire stack in with pocket kings, which I would say is a bit of an overplay, but at the same time, we're only around another $1,200 effective, so I don't really blame him for putting it all in. I, of course, check my cards and snap call, knowing I have the nuts. I have the check mark in this hand, uh, the Lodge has verified that we have the nuts. 6K gonna get shipped over to me. The river card is just a formality and it's a good thing he didn't have ace-king because we would have chopped with the four of diamonds on the river. Still, I'm up to 6K early on, so not a bad start. Fresh out of the gate here in the Lodge 5-10-10 livestream. 
Let's take a look at the winnings. Wolfgang is now up about $3,000 early in the game. Right, this next hand is a fun one. The $25 and $50 straddles are on, and I find myself first to act from the small blind with a beautiful king-queen of diamonds, and I decide on a sizing of 4X all the way up to 200 bucks. Jaywin has a premium in the big blind. He woke up with it here. The Jiggities at the Lodge, go figure. The House of Brad Owen is paying dividends to Jaywin, and he three bets it up to $600. Ifan has a suited Ace-5 offsuit. He could probably four bet here a small portion of the time. Those Ace-5 suiteds are very powerful. Instead, he decides just to call, knowing that Jaywin has a very narrow three betting range here, I think, from the big blind, and the action's back over to me. I also understand that Jaywin shouldn't have too much garbage in his three betting range, so I don't really want to four bet here at too high of a frequency and then get blown off my hand. So uh, given the fact that we all seem to have around 34% equity in this hand, I put in the call. It's going to be a fair fight, and let's see who comes out on top. The flop chooses me on a queen 7 4 with one diamond board. Not going to be leading out into Jaywin. I check it over to him. He's in between me and Ifan, monkey in the middle, sandwiched like an Oreo, and uh, he wisely decides to check it. Given the fact there is an overcard and he's out of position, not exactly the best spot to be in. Action's over to Ifan, and he just has an overcard, a backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw. But don't tell him that. He's going to put in some money here and try to get a few hands to fold. The bet is $650, and I don't think either of us are going anywhere. For instance, if I didn't have King-Queen here and I just folded, Jaywin would definitely put in the call with his pair. But uh, once I put in the call, Jaywin has a pretty easy fold. One of us has to have a queen or maybe pocket sevens or pocket fours. So I toss in a 1K chip signifying a call. Jaywin wisely gets out of the way and we are going to go off heads up out of position to the turn. Turns about as groovy as it can get. It comes another four. I say groovy because another four means it's less likely Ifan has pocket fours and more likely that we're going to be winning this hand. I check it over to Ifan, and when he checks behind, it's pretty concrete in my brain that we have the best hand here. So when the river comes, the eight of hearts, going to be going for a bet and trying to get a worse hand to call. Now let's think about all the worst hands he might have here. He could have a hand like seven, eight. He could have seven, six. He could have pocket tens, nines, eight, stuff like that. And of course, he could have some worse queens like queen 10 and queen jack. Although I don't really think those would check behind on the turn. So I think it's a lot of weaker hands, maybe some ace high holdings as well. Kind of like exactly what Ifan has. All of those hands I just mentioned won't be calling a large bet. And uh, most of them won't be betting themselves. So I definitely like leading out here. And I like leading out at a very small sizing, just trying to exploitatively target a lot of weak hands. I decided to go one tenth the size of the pot to the tune of $350. And uh, yeah, listen to the announcer here. He loves this bet size. Almost an insultingly small bet from Wolf Wolfgang. Gotta love it. It's kind of an insulting bet, and Ifan has to fold with his ace high. Wouldn't blame him also sometimes for putting in the call, just wondering to uh, look me up and see what I have. But he folds here. We don't get any extra value, but still a profit of 2K in this hand. Not too shabby. We're up to eight grand in our stack. $5,000 worth of profit. All right, Pierre has a pretty easy open here from the hijack with ace nine off. I find myself in the cutoff with a beautiful ace king off and three bet him to $600. When a bunch of players get out of the way, the action is back over to Dat from the under the gun straddle. And uh, he has a decision here with a suited ace or not. He just folds it, gets out of the way there. A four bet would have been interesting. I probably would have five bet ripped it on him. But uh, yeah, we're not in that spot. He mucks and max in the uh, plus two slash straddle. He's in the $100 straddle here. So yeah, this game got pretty big pretty quick. From here on out, pretty much played like a 50-100. So yeah, all that talk of real stakes, poker, relatable poker, out the window. We are playing 50-100 the rest of the stream. Max decides to call here with pocket ochos, and uh, Pierre gets out of the way. The action's back over to me, and uh, yeah, we are going heads up in position to a flop, which comes jack-6-6 six, six with two diamonds. Max has a pretty easy check. The action's on me. I'm going to have ace-jack and all the overpairs. So I decided to go for a C-bet of around one-third the size of the pot, to which Max snap calls me. Doesn't even think about it for a second. Might be a tell, might not be. Let me know down below what you think of a snap call in this spot. But when he puts in the call and the seven of spades peels off on the turn, he checks it over to me once again. This is the inflection point of the hand. Am I giving up and checking behind? Or am I betting here to set up a river shove? We got option one and option two. Option one doesn't seem too fun. We're on a live stream. We gotta be putting on a show from time to time and take some of these spots, these high aggressive, very, very aggressive lines. 
So uh, yeah, Max checks it over to me. I'm gonna represent all the strong hands in my range. I still think he could uh, call here with a diamond draw and then give up on the river. He could also have some uh, straight draws like eight, nine maybe, or maybe five, seven that might call here and then uh, fold on the river. So I like my bet sizing here. There's 2,500 in the middle and I decide to go just around half the size of the pot. Now watch how fast Max calls here. Basically it takes about three seconds and tosses in the call. So uh, yeah, snap call on the flop, snap call on the turn. This is probably a weak hand slash diamond draw if I'm uh, assuming correctly. I think a jack would think about it a little bit more. But uh, yeah, he puts in the snap call leading us off to the river, which comes a brick, it comes the 10 of clubs. I guess not a total brick because it brings in eight, nine and Max has two of those eights, but I really shouldn't have eight, nine in my uh, three betting range pre-flop. So uh, yeah, not the biggest scare card in the world for Max. Still, he checks it over to me. His pocket eights just want to get to a cheap showdown. There's $5,000 in the middle. Max has me covered. What do I have? 4360 in my stack. I'm gonna have to go for it here if I want to get him to fold. This is the decision point on the turn I decided to bet. And now I gotta follow through on the river, get some of these pocket pairs to fold, for instance, like pocket eights, pocket fives, fours, anything that decided to get sticky. I don't think he's gonna fold a jack, and I'm not really putting him on that. So let's get his sevens, eights, fives, fours, all to fold. But that's not gonna stop Wolfgang, he ships it. And I go for glory here and rip it all in. And now Max does not snap call me, which I love to see. As he's thinking longer and longer, all I can think about in my head is to play it cool, do my best Tom Dwan impersonation and stare at one card on the board. It wasn't too long ago, like a year or two ago, I was bluffing for $1,000 pots at the most. And now look at us in a 10K pot here. If he calls, it'll be 15K and uh, we'll have lost that pot. So pretty crazy how far we've come here. But I love that I put him in a tough spot either way. If he puts in the call, I love that I went for this bet here and just put it by money where my mouth is and show that I'm not scared money. Still, I really would prefer a fold. And at the end of the day, Max thinks he can't be good in this spot. And Max is going to fold face up. Wolfgang shows it. Of course, it's a live stream. I have to show the table that I got the ace high bluff through. I turn it over and uh, he acknowledges nice bluff. We are taking down that $9,300 pot. And look at us, our stack is up to just around $10,000, seven grand worth of profit so far. We are cruising right along in this next hand. Nothing has gone bad so far. I hope that's not a bit of foreshadowing in this one. Yu Chan raises the hijack up to 150 with a pretty nice hand. And look at us, we find ourselves in the small blind with ace king offsuit. What are those little red dots in front of us that have the word knit on it and also next to our name on the graphics? Well, that's the knit game. Basically what that means is everyone gets a button. When you win a hand, you give it back to the dealer and the last person with the knit button in front of them has to pay a fee to everyone at the table. This time it was a hundred dollars a pop. So not too shabby here. It would have been $700 if we lose the knit game. There's only a few players left in this. So we have to come in for an aggressive line. Just so helps that we have ace king offsuit and I decide to three bet him up to the tune of $700. That three bet sends some alarm bells through the rest of the table. They all fold and the actions back over to Yu Chan. He also has the knit button in front of him, which means he's probably gonna play a little bit looser than normal. And uh, yeah, look at this. He decides not to call with pocket jacks. Instead, he thinks I'm gonna be three betting a little bit light and decides to put in the four bet. He tosses out a yellow chip mixed with a whole bunch of other chips as well. And the sizing is $1,800. Man, this pot boated up fast from $150 to $700 to $1,800. The action's back over to me. I could just call for around $1,100 more. I have $8,100 in my stack. So uh, yeah, after that call, it'd leave me with around six grand behind into a $3,600 pot. Not the best situation in the world. I probably just want to stuff it all in here and maybe try to get hands like tens and nines to fold, which would be a huge win taking down his four bet for $1,800 with no contest. If I can get a hand like jacks to fold, that would be an even bigger win. And uh, yeah, I do have the nip button in front of me, but uh, for the most part, my five bet shoving range is just going to be ace king suited, aces, kings, and queens. So his pocket jacks aren't looking too great against that range. And I decide to exercise some aggression here and five bet rip it all in for around $8,200. If he calls here, this will be a massive one, the largest one I've played tonight. But I'm just hoping he honestly folds so I don't find myself in a flip situation. 
The action's back over to Yu Chan, obviously, and he's in a tough spot. You can see he doesn't snap call like he might against other players. He's thinking about it for a little while. Ultimately, though, he does not do what we wanted him to do, and he tosses in a 5K chip indicating a call. I ask him if he wants to run it once or twice. He's a one-time type of guy. I gladly would have run it twice. Not really trying to flip for $18,000. That's a lot of money. So yeah, definitely uh, would run it twice if he wanted to. But when he wants to run it once, that's what we're going to do. I don't put up a fight, and we are going to go off to a flop. We have 44% chance to win this 18K pot. And we're going to need to spike an ace or a king within these five cards to take down this massive one. All right, you guys, I'm thinking of a flop. I need some run good. Make sure you like this video. Uh, looks like a few of you guys did not like the video because Jack 10-4 is the flop. What a disaster. We're all the way down to 14%. The only saving grace is we can win now with any four queens left in the deck. The turn card does not give us any help. We are down to 9% equity and we're going to need a queen on the river and only that because we don't have the ace of hearts in our hand. That would have been a nice little backdoor there. But uh, yeah, the river comes the ace of clubs. Little insult to injury because if he didn't catch a jack on the flop, we would have taken down that pot on the river. Unfortunately for us though, we are going to get stacked. Our entire chip stack is going over to Yu Chan. Not really the best feeling in the world when we run 3k up to 8800, only to give it all away in a flip. Uh, I didn't ask to see what the second board would have been. That would have been torture because uh, I would have ran it twice and probably would have chopped. But uh, yeah, he's taking down that one and we reach into our pocket and top up for an additional $10,000. We have come to play. All right, unfortunate news to report. We end up losing the knit games. We ended up paying out $700 to everybody at the table. $100 a pop. And yeah, we're in another knit game. This table wants the action. And uh, I'm not going to say no. I'm trying to win a bounty back from another player. That opens it up to 225 from the cutoff. Max put in the call from the small blind. I find myself in a pretty clear three betting spot. But for some reason, I decide just to put in the call. That's what I decided to do. 225 in the middle. And the action's over to Jaywin in the plus one straddle. Against the raise and two callers, this is a pretty good squeeze spot for Jaywin. He doesn't hurt that he has a hand as strong as King Jack suited. So I really like this play from him here in trying to isolate, take down around six or $700 worth of dead money. And uh, yeah, he comes in for a really good sizing here of $1,300. And the action's back over to Dad. Dad has my favorite hand, pocket sevens, and I really want him to put in the call. The reasoning is I'm trying to hit a nine here and win a large pot. So I definitely want more people putting money in to incentivize and give me a good pot odd situation. Unfortunately though, Dat makes a pretty tight fold here with my favorite hand, which uh, causes Max to fold as well. I think if Dat would have called, Max definitely would have tried to set mine with threes. But you can see how the butterfly effect takes effect here. And uh, Dat folds, Max folds the actions on me. Really don't like this spot. I know Jaywin has a pretty wide three betting range here versus a lot of dead money. But if I call here, it's kind of a weird line for me. It doesn't really scream strength. I'm never going to have aces, kings, queens, all that good stuff. So Jaywin can really exercise some aggression and just put me in a tough spot on turns and rivers. Still, pocket nines I think is too strong to fold. So I decided to put in the call for an additional $1,000. And just like that, we are out of position in a $3,100 pot. And the flop comes 5-5 five, five deuce with two clubs. Nothing for me to do other than check it over to Jaywin. And uh, honestly, this isn't the best board for his range, but look at his hand. He has two over cards and a flush draw. Pretty sweet flop for him. It's 50-50 on this board. I do have a small 1% edge here. And Jaywin is going to continue the aggression and try to represent hands like 10s plus. There's 3,100 in the middle, and he decides on a sizing of 1,700, just over half the size of the pot. Now I could go for a check raise here with my overpair trying to get hands like ace king, king queen to fold. Not many turn cards that I will like here. For instance, if a 10 of diamonds peels off, does he just have a hand like ace 10 suited? If a jack peels off, does he have queen jack? I mean, I just don't know where I stand versus a lot of turn cards. So a check raise makes a lot of sense, but I decide just to put in the call. You guys can let me know down below. Are you check raising here or just calling? I think calling is fine as well. I have a club in my hand blocking some club combos like ace nine suited and stuff like that. I put in the call and we are playing a $6,600 pot and the turn is a beautiful deuce of hearts. Let's me know exactly where I'm at now. I'm either way behind all of his pocket pairs or way ahead of hands exactly like he has, although I'd prefer him to have king jack of diamonds instead of king jack of clubs. Still, I think a check is in order for me 
and I probably want to be chuck shoving this turn, but uh, Jaywin is not going to give me that chance. Instead, what Jaywin decides to do is an overbet, $6,900 into the $6,500 pot, and it puts me in a tough, tough spot. Still, I think if I was going to go for a check shove here on the turn, I probably should just be calling this shove. But at the same time, I think a lot of his hands like ace-king offsuit are just going to shut down here. So it's really just hands like tens, jacks, queens, kings, aces, maybe some suited ace-king like ace-king of spades, ace-king of clubs, and then other random club hands that are going to be firing here against that entire range. I'm not doing exactly too well. You can see I have 68% equity against the worst hands in his range. So uh, yeah, against hands like pocket tens, I'm uh, drawing to two outs, which is not a great situation to be in. Still, I'm stuck in the game for around $3,000. I'm in a big spot here, and sometimes when your back is against the wall, you gotta put the money in. If you'll remember on a stream two videos ago at TCH, I ended up making a big fold against JD in a similar spot where he overbet the pot, I think three times actually, and I found a fold with the best hand. I learned from that mistake. You guys are commenting that I should have put in the call there. So I have pocket nines here. I'm gonna take a stand. I count out my chip stack and understand it's a large one here. It's a $7,000 bet from Jaywin. Putting my money where my mouth is, I'm not gonna let you guys down for a second time. There's the call. This is a $20,000 pot, folks. Fuck. I put in the call like a hero. But uh, yeah, we're going to have to fade some river cards here. We only have a 68% chance to win this. So one out of every three times, we are going to lose this $20,000 pot. Good news for us, though, is Jay Win wants to run it two times. So we're going to need to fade a club, jack, or king on the river twice. And it's always great news when the first board locks up half the pot for you and it comes the three of hearts. Gonna wanna see a four, six, seven of hearts. That would be a beautiful card on the second board. And it comes the six of hearts, look at that. We scoop a 20.5K pot. We win 10 grand of profit in this hand alone. And just like that, we're in for 13K in this game and we're up $7,000 after that disaster 18K pot against Yu Chan. We put the money where our mouth is and uh, get rewarded by the poker gods, running it twice there. How unfortunate would it have been if I decided to run it twice and we would have won the first board and chopped the second. Oh man, that would have been pretty gross, but uh, luckily that is not in the cards for us tonight. Taking down that 20K pot, I'm feeling pretty great here at the lodge. Right, the knit game is back on. We won that last one, luckily for us, with that huge pot. But it's back on for 100 bucks a pop again. And right now, it's down to me and one other player. So not great news. We don't want to give back $700 to the table. I look down at pocket threes from the hijack, a pretty great hand. And I raise it up to $150 over a $50 straddle. And a dat in the big blind decides to put in the call. Yuchan decides to put in the call from the straddle. And uh, we are going three ways to the flop with pocket threes, which comes jack, jack, eight, rainbow. Really nothing for anybody on this board. I hope a C-bet's gonna take it down. However, Dat is the only other player left in this knit game, so he's probably gonna defend it here one time. Still, I think a C-bet is in order. There's 515 in the middle, and I decide on a sizing of 200 bucks. I would love Dat to fold, but he has a pretty good hand, ace high, puts in the call, and Yu Chan gets out of the way. When the eight of diamonds peels off on the turn, at first it seems pretty harmless and I'll continue betting until I realize the board is double paired and my pocket threes are counterfeit. So a disaster card for me. I now just have three high with two pair and Dat has a commanding lead here with his ace high. He checks it over to me and uh, yeah, a pretty gross card. I think I could be continuing to bet here and trying to bluff him off his hand, but at the same time, I'm gonna have a lot of random ace highs. So I check it behind and uh, yeah, we see the seven of hearts peel off on the river. Dat checks it over to me for a third time in a row. And I really think about it here, if I could go for a bluff, if I should just check it back. He's definitely calling with any ace or king high. I think queen high might even be incentivized to call with the knit game on for $100 a pop. So I don't really think he's folding much and it's hard for me to represent much when I check back on the turn. So I have to give up here with my uh, pocket threes that got counterfeit. Unfortunately for us, I know checking behind is going to lose me this pot, which is not great news. Dat turns over his two pair, 
And uh, $100 for everyone here at the table. I feel like Oprah, you get 100, you get 100, you get 100. Minus 700 plus the size of this $900 pot. Not exactly the best hand in the world. All right, a few hands to go here. I look down at pocket jacks in this one. There is a raise by Yu Chan in the hijack. Max puts in the call with a suited eight, seven of spades. And I am in the small blind with pocket jiggities. It is a reoccurring hand here at the lodge. Brad's hand always comes into play a few times. This time I have pocket jack from the small blind and I wanna go large here. I decide on a sizing, I believe, of $750. Yep, that's exactly what I decide to do and the action folds back around to Yu Chan with ace 10 offsuit. I think he has a pretty easy call here in position. He might also want to fold considering I shouldn't be three betting too light. But uh, yeah, he actually decides to do neither of those. So uh, at the end of the day, what do I know? He uh, likes the four bet here with the ace 10 off. We pull up GTO wizard here. It definitely does not agree with Yu Chan, but uh, he might be smarter than the solver. He puts in the four bet, which clears the field from Max. And the action's back over to me with pocket jacks. GTO wizard says I have a pretty clear call. So that's what I decide to do. Always good to know and double check that your play agrees with a computer which is uh, incrementally uh, smarter than you are. So I make a good call here. Don't really think uh, five betting pocket jacks makes any sense. So I decide to put in the call. I also could be folding, which is an interesting line. Don't think I'm ever gonna be folding pocket jacks in a live stream game this deep. If I spike a jack against a hand like Kings Races, I'm gonna win like a 35K pot. So definitely not folding. I decide just to put in the call. Just like that, we are going off to the flop. Flop's a pretty bad one for us. It comes a 7 4 with two spades, and I wisely check it over to Yu Chan. I have a pretty easy check here. The action's on Yu Chan, and he decides to check it behind and get a little bit tricky with his pair of aces. He really shouldn't have too much ace 10 offsuit, so maybe he's trying to pot control in case I have a hand like ace jack, ace queen, ace king. But yeah, when he checks it behind, the deuce of clubs peels off on the turn. I could decide to lead out on this turn, but I still think he's gonna check back the uh, flop with hands like kings and queens and hands that just aren't really gonna fold to a lead from me here. So when I check it over to Yu Chan, I think he has a pretty clear bet here with his entire range. If he has kings or queens, probably could be betting here. Don't really think I'm gonna be trapping with too many aces. So yeah, $3,900 in the middle and he reaches for some chips. He decides on a small sizing of $1,300 and the action's back over to me. If we look at GTO Wizard here, you'll see that uh, Pocket Jacks is a pretty clear fold in this spot. All my other uh, pairs as well, even up to Pocket Queens, are definitely going to be folding in this spot. Ace-5, Ace-Queen, Ace-King, and Ace-King suited are all going to be coming in for a raise. And then you have Pocket Kings, which uh, can't fold to just one bet. But interesting, it decides to fold with Queens and Jacks, and now let's bring it back into real time and see what I decide to do. I did get a little bit tempted to put in the call considering Yu Chen checked behind on the flop, but uh, ultimately I didn't really think he would do this with King-Queen suited and King-Jack suited, so I decided to fold. Glad that I agreed with the solver GTO wizard. If you guys want a discounted price on that solver, there is a link down below. I think it's a code Wolfgang or something like that, but uh, definitely great to get a discount on such a uh, valuable resource. They also just introduced AI into their um, solving. So yeah, definitely getting better and better each time. That's why I'm getting better at the tables and knowing when to call and fold. And you guys can too for a discount. Link is down below. All right, a few hands to go here. I looked down at ace deuce of diamonds from the button and I decided to raise it up to $600. I believe in this hand, there was a $200 straddle on. So now we are playing 100, 200 in this spot. So the open raise size is 3X. So I have to make it $600, which is pretty crazy. That is a large amount. I make it $600. And the action folds around to Ifan in the big blind who puts in the call with queen at nine of spades. Yu Chan is in that $200 straddle and uh, he's not going anywhere with the suited ace deuce. The exact same hand as me. Puts in the call. You can see the gears are turning in his head. He kind of wants to come in for a three bet. Ultimately decides better of it and uh, puts in just the call leading us off three ways to a flop which comes 10-10-8 with two hearts. The action checks over to me. I probably could be C betting. I probably could be checking behind. I decide to do option B and check behind, assuming that no one here is really folding any pocket pairs. Someone could easily have a hand like 9-10 or ace-10 and uh, yeah, be trapping me. So I check it behind, bringing in the six of diamonds on the turn. And uh, now the action checks over to me for a second time. 
Very, very weak from Efan and Yu Chan. I think they could have pocket fives, fours, threes. They could have hands like nine jack and nine seven. Nine seven now makes a straight, so I don't really think they're gonna be checking that to me. Maybe some flush draws that are going to continue if I decide to bluff here. I have ace high, which beats a lot of hands like king, queen, king, jack, jack, uh, nine, all that good stuff. So I decided to take my showdown value and check it over once again, bringing in a river card, which comes a nice card, the queen of hearts, and the action checks through to me again. Now the queen of hearts is definitely a card that's gonna connect pretty well with me. I'm gonna have ace, queen, king, queen, queen, jack. Uh, yeah, that you can see that Ifan though has a pair of queens, which is not great news, but I still think this is a good card to get hands like pocket fives, pocket fours, and pocket threes to fold. And uh, those are hands that I do not beat with my ace high. So I like my bet here for $1,000 into the $1,900 pot. But unfortunately for me, I'm going to run into Ifan. Ifan has a pretty obvious call here, unless he only puts me on hands like king, queen, and ace, queen. He really can't do that though. Just uh, not a good play to put an opponent on two exact hands and fold. But we are hoping he does so, and the poker gods have convinced Efan he's not good. He folds two pair, and uh, Yu-Chan has a pretty easy fold with ace high. Oh, me too. Did Efan fold in this hand? He did. Wow, Wolfgang is going to get that through. Can't believe I got Efan to fold there. We are taking down a $2,900 pot. In the moment, I didn't know Efan folded as good a hand as uh, Queen-9 suited. But uh, yeah, I thought I just got a few uh, pocket pairs to fold there. Little do I know I'm getting a queen to fold. What a massive, massive pot for us there. All right, moving right along into the last hand of the night, just a small piece of information. Max is a cool guy. He wanted the $400 straddle on in this one, and I found myself in that spot. I was on the fence. Should I do it? Should I not do it? I was honestly leaning towards not putting in the $400 straddle, and Max saw this and uh, decided to let me know that if I decide to put out $300, he'll put the other 25% of it being 100 bucks and complete the 400. The guy offers $100 out of his stack to put in a straddle for you. You can't say no, right? So I take his $100, put my 300 out there, and that means a $400 straddle is out from me, your boy Wolfgang. What a crazy, crazy spot. I think that's the most I've ever straddled. There was a time on TCH Houston's live stream, I put in a very large straddle. I think it might have been around 320. But yeah, this $400 one is probably going to take the cake here. I looked down at a beautiful ace nine of spades. The action's around to Max, who gave me that 100 bucks, and he decides to limp in for 300 more. Pierre has an offsuit ace, decides to limp in for 200, considering he's in the $200 straddle. The action's over to me. I'm in the $400 straddle with a suited ace. We can't play this passively. I know there's a lot of money out there. I decide to toss in a 1K chip. I told Max he's going to get me in some trouble here and uh, hopefully I'm taking down a big pot. Maybe they'll just fold it pre-flop. I'll give him back his 100 and we can move on with our night. That's not the way this hand is gonna go. Max decides to defend the 10-8 suited. It looks pretty. He puts in $1,000 more and uh, yeah, Pierre gets out of the way. We are going heads up in position to a flop, which comes jack 7-4. It doesn't give anything to anybody other than Max has a gutter to the nine. Luckily for me though, I have a nine in my hand which blocks that and uh, Max checks it over to me. I think at this point I'm going to have a lot of jacks in my range, over pairs, maybe sets of sevens and fours. So I'm going to represent everything here and go for a standard C bet. There's $3,300 in the middle and I decide on a sizing of $1,000 to which Max does not think about it for too long and puts in the call. You can see a very fun player Max here. He's giving me a hundred bucks to put in a straddle. He's calling the flop with a gutter and 10 high and the turn card comes a great card for my range, the king of clubs. I know it. Max checks it over to me. And you know we have to bet here. It's a $5,300 pot. I'm playing around 15K effective. So I definitely want to try to get stacks in by the river here and uh, go for that bluff. The reason why I just mentioned my stack size is because if I bet 3K here on the turn and he calls, we'd have 11K in the pot and around 11K in my stack, setting up a nice shove there. I would do that with all my value. So I have to do that with all my bluffs as well. Luckily for us though, when uh, I bet out for $2,200 into the $5,300 pot, doesn't take long before Max folds his cards. Luckily for us, he just had a gutter and not some backdoor 10-8 of clubs BS that would have called another bet. I toss him back the uh, $100 that he loaned me earlier and uh, we are taking down a $7,500 pot to calf off the night, bringing my chip stack to just under 20 grand. Remember, I was in for just $13,000.
All right, you guys, that wraps up that insane real stakes poker. Yeah, right. That was 10, 25, 50, 100, 200. And uh, your boy got coaxed into putting on the 400 to wrap up the night. Got in for 2K. It was real stakes to begin with. Then we topped up another grand, another uh, 10 grand. So we're in for 13, out for 19, 6, 10. So profit of $6,010. Not too shabby for a few hours of work here at the lodge. Wrapping up that birthday week. Shout out to Lucas, my editor, coming out. Lake Travis, we paid for that whole thing in this one session. As always, good luck on the felt, you guys. Say hi to Slick Rick, Skull, Mike, anybody at the lodge if you guys come out here and play. Tell them your boy Wolfgang sent you, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.